My name is David Heine. I drilled water wells for seven years, then I worked in oil and gas drilling in Wyoming, Colorado, and Utah. Then I went to college to study the petroleum industry. Uh, I finally retired from a major oil and gas company. I generally support oil and gas development. However, I, I am strongly opposed to leasing any of these parcels. These areas should not be leased if for no other reason because they provide the only water sources for thousands of people from water wells and springs. And I believe these water supplies could become contaminated with substances that would render them totally unusable, possibly for many years. The potential of such pollution is theoretically remote due to thousands of feet of separation and impermeable layers between groundwater, strata, and petroleum zones, but it's not impossible. And any risk to such valuable limited water is unacceptable, regardless of how low that risk might be. I supervise stimulation jobs, which improve the porosity and permeability of a reservoir so fluids can move more easily to the well bore. These jobs are similar to fracking, but use, and they use some of the same equipment, only less materials. Common fluids and amounts used are 10,000 gallons of hydrofluoric acid, followed by 10,000 gallons of hydrochloric acid, and followed by maybe 8,000 gallons of diesel, several hundred to several thousand gallons of scale inhibitor, biocide, corrosion inhibitor, surfactants, emulsion and viscosity control agents, and thousands of gallons of brine water to force everything into the target zones. These substances are expected to stay in the formation and do the work of dissolving the reservoir rock so it can produce more oil and gas. However, once pumping into the reservoir, you have absolutely no control over where those, over where those liquids go. High pressure pumping could crack the layers between the intended zone and fresh water zones, or open a path between the casing cement job and the borehole. No one could say that those things are not possible. Consider a simplistic hypothetical example of pumping only the two acids and the diesel, 28,000 gallons, into a reservoir 10,000 feet below a groundwater zone. A small crack equivalent to a half-inch hose along the 10,000 feet would fill with about 200 gallons, a little less than that. This small crack could then allow the remaining 25,800 gallons into a lower pressure potable water aquifer. Is it likely? No, it's not likely, but is it possible? Yes, it absolutely is possible. Oil and gas should be developed only in remote areas where people don't live and depend on the lands for their only fresh water supplies. Please eliminate all these parcels from consideration in these lease sales. Thank you very much. As you brought some friends along. I did. Thank you. <laughs> I'm here today to ask the BLM to remove all 22 parcels from the proposed August gas lease sale. My name is Landon Dean, and I'm here with my husband Rick and my daughter Basha. For 25 years, we've owned 900 acres on Bone Mesa called Eagle Butte Ranch, located in what Forbes magazine dubbed the Golden Triangle, and one of the best places to live in the United States. Our mission statement of the ranch is Gandhi's comment, be the change you wish to see in the world. We try to accomplish this by selling grass-fed beef and hay grown free of antibiotics, hormones, pesticides, and chemicals. We sell all over the United States to buyers interested in quality products not tainted with chemicals. The reason we have chosen to live and work where we do is due to its pristine agricultural environment. Over 25 years, my husband and I have been thrilled to watch the North Fork Valley blossom into a place where large concentration of organic farms exist. It has developed into an almost utopia where the water is clean, the air quality almost perfect, and not tainted it with chemicals and pollution. And the ambient noise is so low that a dog can be heard to bark from almost 10 miles away. All of this in a place that has three towns within a short distance from each other, rich with culture, music, and community. The valley is a foodie's paradise with abundant local food, raised without chemicals, and numerous excellent chefs willing to bring it all to the table. Complement this with outstanding local beer and wine, and this may be the best place to live in the world. From our ranch, we can look out at night and see minimal lights, although we're located right in the middle of the valley. Most nights, we can see the Milky Way so clearly it's difficult to see the regular stars. It's so quiet that it's hard to believe we live in this somewhat populated valley. 
Parcel 6198 is next to and on our property, surrounding it on many sides. As we have multiple springs that feed the ranch, ponds, and lakes, we're very worried that our air, ground, and spring water may be affected by pollution from drilling operations. This could potentially create irreversible environmental damage that could negatively affect our operation. Again, we're extremely concerned about the proposed land lease sales that could threaten our and the wildlife's way of life. The North Fork Valley has been touted as having the highest concentration of organic farms than any place else in the United States. It's not reasonable to allow another business, such as what is proposed, that is likely to destroy what is now a vibrant and sustainable agricultural area. Oil and gas development, we believe, would negatively affect all the reasons we love this valley. I'd like my daughter to go to the I am the next generation, and I pray that you can see beyond the present moment and into the future. They say, with great power comes great responsibility. I challenge you to see how this may change our lifestyle, livelihoods, and community forever. This is too precious, a valley and a resource of food and water to take a chance on. Food and water is essential to the survival of my children and all the children of the earth. Please remove all 22 parcels from this proposed sale. Thank you. Who you I'm Mike Tarbell. Uh, if I get cut off later, uh, let me say immediately, I'm completely opposed to these leases. And I'm requesting that all 22 parcels be withdrawn. The source spring for our domestic water lies squarely within parcel number 6195. And while I'm sure it's fun, I really don't need to be able to light my water on fire. Mike, a little closer to the mic. Thank you. On December 8th of last year, the EPA released a draft report on their investigation of groundwater contamination in the vicinity of the gas field in Pavilion, Wyoming. I don't have time to go into the technical details. Let me go straight to their conclusion. Quote, the explanation best fitting the data for the deep monitoring wells is that constituents associated with hydraulic fracturing have been released into the Wind River drinking water aquifer at depths above the current production zone, end quote. Now this didn't come from Greenpeace, this came from EPA scientists after drilling their own monitoring wells and conducting extensive analytical lab work, flatly concluding that fracking has contaminated the pavilion groundwater. Is it not clear that the burden of proof is now on the energy companies to show that they should be allowed to continue fracking at all, let alone on the parcels being considered here. That is pending some credible refutation of this report, and I have seen none. In the interest of public health, is it not incumbent on any government agency with regulatory power over this activity, including the EPA, BLM, COG, CC, county commissioners on down, to presume by default that this report is valid. And if they do not, are they not squarely in the chain of liability if injury or damage results? So unless you, meaning you government officials, have good reason to think that this report is an outright hoax, I urge you to carefully consider your position. Any cognizant government body that is complicit in letting this activity continue let alone providing new opportunities for it, is simply negligent and should be the target of litigation. Please, do the right thing. Put a stop to this idiocy before it goes any further. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Larry Parker. My wife and I live on Stucker Mesa outside of Paonia. We oppose the leasing of the 22 nominated parcels surrounding this established agricultural area because of the well-documented negative effects of all activities associated with gas drilling. 
We want these parcels withdrawn permanently. We came here five years ago. We looked around at the homegrown, small town culture, the organic produce movement, the winemakers, and the other value-added businesses in this area. And we decided to invest everything we have in it. We bought 40 acres of agricultural land on Stucker Mesa. We've restored the alfalfa pastures and the commercial greenhouse and put them into production. We have planted organic gardens, a wine grape vineyard, and a cherry orchard. We've started a small licensed bonded winery. The view from our property is inspiring. We can see the mountains, the river, and the entire valley all the way to Hotchkiss High School here. We've been planning to add a tasting room to take advantage of this view. If the view is filled with gas drilling pads and the air is polluted by dust and diesel exhaust, who will want to visit our tasting room? Our West Elks AVA, as described by Brent Hellickson, is a major factor in making this area a tourist destination. Does anyone think this would still be a tourist destination if the slopes around the valley were pocked with gas drilling pads. We are well aware of the threats from gas drilling, including water pollution, air pollution, light pollution, noise, dust, and traffic. Our livelihood, property value, and quality of life are threatened. This ill-conceived plan puts everything we have done here in jeopardy. Our mesa is directly affected by parcel 6191, which includes watershed land on both sides of Rope Cap Creek and is adjacent to land containing two springs that supply water to our domestic water company. Our irrigation water is delivered from the overland ditch to our local ditch company through Rope Cap Creek. Stucker Mesa Road is the only vehicle access to parcel 6191. It is a narrow gravel road unsuited to frequent heavy truck traffic. The economic benefits from gas drilling would not be for local residents, but for the corporations and their employees. Our existing local economy could be irreparably damaged in exchange for an insignificant amount of fossil fuel and some short-term profit. To put it simply, we're here already, this is our valley, and we think gas drilling should be done elsewhere. Thank you.